Robbins. Ms. May. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mrs. Uh, we know what the COVID-19 emergency response from government looks like. One year ago today, June 17, 2019, this House voted that we were in a climate emergency. When can we expect to see the government take the climate emergency similarly and seriously? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the, uh, to the Honourable Member for her question. Climate change remains a high priority for this government. It is a crisis. It is something that we as Canadians need to address, as does the broader international community. We had made a commitment to move forward, to address and, and exceed the target that we had established thus for, uh, previously. We had made a commitment to achieving net zero by 2050. We are fully committed to ensuring that we move forward in a manner that will allow us to achieve both of those. Mrs. May? With all due respect, we know what the government looks like when it's taking an emergency seriously. It listens to the science and it applies the programs that science require. In this case, climate emergency, the scientific advice came in the IPCC report from October 8, 2018, that the window on 1.5 degrees, the Paris target, was closing. The current target, put in place by Stephen Harper, is five years old and about half of what needs to be done. If this government treated COVID-19 the way they treat climate, we would have told Theresa Tam, we can't stay six feet apart. You'll have to be happy with three feet. Again, to the minister, when will we see a target consistent with the science? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Certainly, climate change is a science issue. It's not a political issue. It's not a partisan, should not be a partisan issue. We are guided by the science in everything that we are doing. We developed the Pan-Canadian Framework, which has 50 different initiatives to allow us to reduce emissions. We have said that we need, know we need to go further, and we are in the process of developing an updated plan that will ensure that we do that. We will be standing up a panel to consult uh, the, the Canadian public on, on a pathway to net zero by 2050, and are working actively every day to ensure that we do that. Mrs. May? When will we see, I ask the Honourable Minister, when will we see the requirement under the Paris Agreement for a new target tabled by Canada within calendar 2020? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker. <laughs> we, uh, we have been very clear that we would be updating uh, our target in advance of the next COP. That has not changed. We will be doing that, and, uh, and I look forward to being able to, uh, to bring that forward uh, and discussing it with all Canadians. Mrs. May. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And, and to the Honourable Minister, you know, I, I don't know, I mean, it's very difficult because clearly there are well-intentioned ministers and well-intentioned people. I asked the Honourable Minister, do you know the difference between 417 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the global atmosphere with a well-intentioned minister and 417 parts per million in the atmosphere of CO2? with a disinterested or hostile minister? And the answer is no difference at all. We are in a worsening climate emergency, and I need to hear clearly from the minister, and hope I will this time, will we comply with the Paris Agreement and come up with a new target within calendar 2020? I just want to remind the member to address the questions to the chair. The Honourable Minister. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. This government has been very clear we are fully committed to addressing the climate crisis. It is an enormous priority for us. We have put in place a plan. We have worked very hard to develop an additional uh, number of initiatives that will uh, go forward with respect to a new plan and a new target, supplementing the work that was done by the previous Minister of Environment and Climate Change. It is something about which we all feel extremely strongly in this House. Certainly, that's the reason I got into politics in the first place. It's something that I've spent many years of my life working on, and it's something to which I personally and the government as a whole are firmly committed. Mrs. May. I appreciate the good words, Madam Speaker. I've heard them before. What I have not heard is the firm commitment to at least double our target within calendar 2020 to comply with our goal of holding to 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's a critical goal, and the window is closing. We've been in COVID-19. This government has acted with resolve. It's been a whole-of-government approach that has been astonishing. When will we see a similar level of commitment from this government to address the climate emergency? The Honourable Minister. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I think that, that the Honourable Member should, should be aware of, even in the context of a very challenging circumstance with respect to COVID-19, this government has moved forward with key elements of its climate plan, including the pricing on pollution, including ensuring that liquidity for large corporations was put in the context of commitments to climate change. This government has been very clear that this is an enormous priority. It's a priority government by, uh, guided by science. It's a priority that we are working on, not just domestically, but internationally, and it is something that we will continue to work on because we must.